Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my Charmers Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for post-Eternity Code. Want to do an update to the Charmers deck with the release of Araya, the Water uh, Charmer Link Monster. We definitely added some more support, which is definitely useful for the uh, deck as a whole. And we also got the new spell card in the Dual Overload uh, booster set that we definitely needed for the deck. It was the continuous spell. We've been waiting a long time to get that spell and just added for the overall power that this deck can do, which is definitely a spellcaster control type of deck. And I probably won't be doing an update to this deck again until we get the structure deck released. So definitely excited for that because we'll be getting even more support for this to officially make it a, you know, full-fledged Yu-Gi-Oh deck that focuses on the different plays that the familiar possessed and the charmers can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So now with the release of Araya, I wanted to focus on all the different, um, you know, elemental uh, tribute uh, familiar possessed in the deck. So I'm running two familiar possessed Araya, two familiar possessed Asa, two familiar possessed Hida, and two familiar possessed Win in the deck, each having the same effect by sending one of their respective charmers and one of the same attribute monster from your side of the field to the graveyard. You can special summon this card from your hand or deck if special summon this way. Uh, this card gets the following effects during the battle between attacking uh, defense edition monster with defense uh, lower than it. You inflict the difference as battle damage, so basically inflicting piercing battle damage. I'm running two of each. I just think it's a good variety of the different cards. We have plenty of search and draw power to get access to these cards in the deck, and just having the different ones work very, very well with a bunch of the other different spells we're running in the deck as a whole, and also their respected spell and traps just to help with the overall setup for all of the different cards which we'll get over and discuss with uh, when we get to the spells and traps. For the charmer monsters I'm running one Araya the water charmer, one Asa the earth charmer, one Hida the fire charmer, and one win the wind charmer. Each one having the effect when you it is flipped you take control of one monster with the same attribute of one of the charmer monsters uh, and then as long as this card remains faceable on the field you have control of that monster. So having all four of the charmers available to us now works very very well since we have all the different you know link monster charmers as well that work very very well for the overall support of the deck because it's just that much easier to get out those link monsters to take resources from our opponent's graveyard along with the cards on the field using the uh, charmer flip monsters and then having more of a stronger monster base using the different uh, familiar possessed monsters in the deck and like I said it's just that much more stronger now that we have all four of the different link monsters to use with all of the other cards we run in the deck also. For some more added support, I'm also running three Fairy Tail Luna. When this card is normal summoned, you can add one Spellcaster monster with 1,850 attack from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, quick effect, you could target one face of monster your opponent controls. Your opponent can send one card with that monster's name from either their deck or extra deck to the graveyard to negate this effect. Otherwise, return both this card and that monster to the hand. So the fact that this card can search out a monster with 1,850 attack means that you could basically search out any of the familiar possessed monsters with having 1,850 attack for all of them giving you the search for whichever ones you need just for that easy search power and then if you can you know return Luna to your hand with your opponent's monster you can then just summon it back again and then get that search all over again giving you more and more search power using this card it's very very useful just for that power but then also making it so if your opponent has multiples of extra deck monsters that they may need to rely on you can just have them send it to the graveyard and then lose that resource as well and then for the final of the monsters, I am running three Summoner Monk with the amount of spells we run in this deck and the fact that we just have easy spell casters to summon out and then just more and more extra deck uh, resources to rely on. You can use Summoner Monk to get out any of the familiar possessed monsters and then go from there with your plays, either just having them on the field to use for the link play because then with Summoner Monk and whichever one you summon out, you have access to all of the different link monsters which we now run in the deck as well. And then being able to go for that play using Summoner Monk with that to go for any other attribute your opponent may have in their uh, graveyard. Since with Summoner Monk you're given access to e any of the uh, familiar possessed charm monsters. And then going there for their resources to use on your field. 
And that is it for the monsters running. Uh, basically just the uh, straight up lineup for the control purposes of getting out your charmer and your familiar possessed monsters, along with the extra support of searching and special summoning with Summoner Monk and Luna. For these spells, I am running three of the new Awakening of the Possessed. Uh, this card was in the OCG for a good while. Just took a while for us to actually get it. So I was very happy when we got it in Dual Overload. It's a continuous spell. Monsters you control gain 300 attack for each different attribute you control. Charmer and familiar possessed monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects and if a special summon uh, monster with 1850 original attack is normal or special summon to your field uh, basically a spellcaster not special summon sorry uh, about that you draw one card you can only use this effect of awakening of the possessed once per turn so if you have multiples of this card it's just another easy card to make use of with summoner monk but the fact that it gives you draw power and overall just protects your uh, familiar possessed and your charmer monsters from being destroyed by card effects it's all the better and it doesn't limit it to your opponent's card effects it's also your own card effects so if you use any other destruction cards which we'll get over to in these spells it's that much more powerful because then you can eliminate your opponent's resources but don't have to worry about destroying your own also you definitely want to run three of it just having this card set up on the field for that draw power is a big play for sure in itself and the fact that we run plenty of spellcaster monsters i'm also running three secret village of the spellcasters if you only control a spellcaster monster your opponent cannot activate spells if you control no spellcaster monsters you cannot activate spells but you should always almost have a spellcaster monster on the field to use with your other spell cards activated it's just you know making them that much more stronger and limiting your opponent to their spells is a big shutdown for sure depending on the type of deck you're going up against so three secret village just means you have those resources to uh, grab hold of and any multiples once again just like the awakening of the possessed can just be a cost for summoner monk to send to the graveyard. And I am also running two Darkhole. I really do like this card. You can substitute one of these with Regeki if you wish, but just having this and then your Awakening of the Possessed on the field, if you have your uh, Familiar Possessed or your Charmer on the field and you activate Darkhole, it won't be destroyed because Awakening of the Possessed presents, uh, basically prevents them from being destroyed by card effects. You'll destroy all your opponent's monsters, but your Familiar Possessed will stay on the field. Even if you have the multiples, you'll just be able to keep all of the different ones on the field keeping their power boost and then eliminating your opponent's cards on their field so i like to run two dark hole just for that option if your opponent definitely goes for the field swarm it's a great card to rely on just to wipe out all of their monsters on the field and to get multiples of the charmers on the field, I'm also running two a double summon, just an easy way to make use of the normal summon as well, since you'll get that draw power with Awakening of the Possessed, making up for the activation of the double summon, since it's going to be uh, one card gone, just for the additional normal summon of a card and giving you that draw power, and getting you more and more stronger monsters on the field, even, you know, going with Fairy Tale Luna, if you normal summon Luna, and then you activate double summon, you can search what you added with your uh, Luna to your hand, wouldn't be one of the charmers, but it would would be one of the familiar possessed onto the field to summon with that play and then if you don't want to keep them on the field for their own boost you can you know overlay with them link summon you name it with double summon as a big help just to get them on the field faster and then for some of the one-ofs, I'm running one Terraforming, one Monster Reborn, and one Pot of Avarice with the Charmer Monsters. Pot of Avarice definitely does come in handy just to be able to recycle them so you have multiples to reuse in the deck as well since we're only running one-ofs. But even if you just need to get one of these specific attributes back into the deck to reuse also, it's a big help there. Monster Reborn just being for the resource summoning from your graveyard and Terraforming searching out the Secret Village so you can have it as a better option to shut down your opponent's cards also. And also to finish off these spells, I am running three Call by the Grave, just pretty much staple there. You want to be able to get your searches off with Luna and all of that. So cards like Ash Blossom, Effect Veiler, Effect Veiler especially, and you know Ash Blossom with Summoner Monk being a big play and investment to go in. You want to make sure it goes off. So having Call by the Grave to rely on uh, will definitely help to keep that situation going. And that is it for the spells. We'll now move on to the traps. I am running three unpossessed. When you have this and awakening of the possessed on the field, it's a pretty good wall to rely on against your opponent. Charmer monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. If a familiar possessed monster you control attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during the damage calculation only. And if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or car effect, you can special summon one spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your deck whose attribute is different than uh, those of one of the destroyed original 
original tributes on the field in attack position or face down defense. So it basically works with your charmer monsters. Uh, you know, if they were in defense, having the 1500 uh, defense or even, uh, you know, with either of the familiar possessed or your charmers, you'll get each of the search with this card. So very, very useful there. And then the power boost as well. And the fact that they can't be destroyed by battle makes them almost impossible to get rid of as long as you have unpossessed and, you know, awakening of the possessed on the field. It just makes for a big wall for your opponent to get over with your charmer and familiar possessed monsters. And to finish off the traps and the main deck, I'm also running three DNA transplant. Just being able to change the attributes of the different cards in the field work very, very well for the charmers because then your opponent's attributes will be the same. You'll be able to gain control of any of the monsters they have as long as you have the proper charmer on the field as well to make use of. It works uh, kind of against Awakening of the Possessed, so just remember that when using this card. You'll still gain the 300, but just a better option to go for if you're looking to take control of one of your opponent's cards, especially one of their stronger cards also on the field. And you still will have to make sure that your charmers won't be able to be destroyed by battle with cards like Unpossessed, since then you'll always have control of that monster, since it's as long as the charmer remains on the field. And since they'll both be protected by battle and card effects, you won't have anything to worry about there either. And that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck for the uh, you know Charmer monsters. I'm running one of each. So one Hida, the Fire Charmer Ablaze, one Asa, one Win, and one of the new Araya. I'm surprised they made Araya a super rare. It is a really, really good card compared to the other ones that were originally released as rares first. But I run one of each. You have all these different options to summon out. You just need a monster, including one of these specific attributes to make it. And you being able to target a water monster in your opponent's graveyard or win or earth or fire when you summon this card and then being able to recycle some of your own cards when it's destroyed by a card effect is just all the better as well and it has 1850 attacks so it works very well for those other situations i'm just running one of each when you know i had few of the other numbers i ran multiples but i feel just having one of each gives you plenty of options to summon out each of the different ones in the deck especially when you have the resources to go up against your opponent's monsters also for some of the generic link plays, I'm also running one IP Mascarina, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Miss Starboy, since Araya is the kind of focus for this deck profile being the newest one as well, one Nightmare Unicorn, and one Borolo Dragon for the link monsters. And for the Xyz monsters, I'm running one Alchemic Magician, just when so you can get those different level four monsters. It's a good card to especially have for resource building for your spells on the field. One Downward Magician, same. Uh, premise with the piercing damage also one perform age trapeze magician just a good spellcaster to have as a powerhouse and for the generics one abyss dweller and one tornado dragon just so you always have those exceed options available to you i don't run any of the rank threes i don't you know it doesn't happen as often and when you have your charmer on the field most of the time it's because the flip effect worked and you want it to remain on the field so you can have control of your opponent's card for as long as you can as for actual play combos it all relies on just having your setup of your awakening of the possessed or your unpossessed on the field and then setting up your different uh, charmers face down to gain control of your opponent's monsters when they're flipped up or just hitting for the big damage when you summon out your other charmers for their power plays combined with all the different attack power they can gain with awakening of the possessed and also shutting down your opponent with secret village of the spellcaster. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoy the video. Like I said, definitely excited for when we'll be getting the uh, structure deck. It'll definitely make all the different charmer plays that much more fun with the support we're getting. But until then, I still really do like all that we have for it. It makes for a very fun control deck especially. But until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.